الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد إلى حبت في الله one of our brothers may Allah subhanahu wa taala guide us and guide him and forgive us and forgive him asked the question and made the comments the following comments and I'll just bring some of the comments. He said, may Allah preserve us and preserve him and guide us and guide him. I've got to be honest with you. After considering what you've said for the past couple of days, I realize I largely disagree. The scholars are reference points for knowledge, giving opinions, sometimes right and other times wrong only. The glaring contradiction is obvious. The texts are there for everyone who's literate to read. It's a well-known fact that scholars of knowledge, while following trends, interpreting events, and trying to regulate actions, are rarely the practitioners who implement and lead movements of people. We call them armchair revolutionaries, just sitting and reading the interpreting and passing judgment. Then this brother went on to say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide him and all of those people who follow this kind of ideology, because in fact it's an ideology which is widespread, unfortunately, amongst the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this day and time. And that's why it's imperative that we address this. He says, he goes on to say, after speaking about uh, other issues related to this. He said, I mean, the earth is not flat. It never has been. Any illiterate man with eyes that can see can testify to that. While scholars sometimes are blind and in positions of authority and give ridiculous or sometimes just plain and simple wrong opinions, may they be rewarded for the effort and according to their intention, Allah knows best. Ahabatifillah. This is similar to what Yasser Qadi is spreading about the scholars that they are not in tune with the people or that they don't know what the affairs of the people and the judgments of the people. And there are many people other than him, but I just wanted to single him out because I have knowledge of the fact of his statements of what he has said more recently about these issues and how it affects the people. But let's go to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in regards to knowledge and the ulama and the importance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us with knowledge. He says, and know that to Allah you will return. So Allah commands us with knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ فَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمِ Allah says, and know that Allah is Aziz al-Hakim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَتَسْلَحُوا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ سَعِيُّ عَلِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and describes ilm for himself, that he is the all-hearing all and the all-knowing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ And fear Allah, and know that Allah is over, has knowledge of everything. And there are countless ayats to show uh, that this is a characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is ilm. So ilm being something great and azim, and something required for the Muslim. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem, fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah wa astaghfir li dhanbik wa lil mu'mineen wa lil mu'minat wallahu ya'lam mutaqallabakum wa mithwaakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem, then know that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and seek forgiveness uh, for your sins and for 
the on behalf of the Muslim men and the Muslim women, and the law knows, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows uh, what's uh, in your hearts and what your ending is. Again, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commands us with knowing, fa'lam annu la ilaha illallah. So it requires ilm, and I don't think the brother or any of the people who have this negative outlook towards the ulama of, of Islam that they would disagree with the fadl of ilm and the importance of knowledge and knowing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions fi kitab al kareem in the ayat in surah In Surah uh, Ali Imran, قال سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن من الكتاب وأخرى متشابهة فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ في يتبعون فيتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما وما يذكر إلا أولى الباب. Allah subhanahu wa taala says في كتاب الكريم also describing the people of knowledge. He said هو الذي هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب. He's the one who revealed to you the book. منه آيات محكمات and there are verses that are clear and that have clear uh, decisive rulings. The محكمات. هن أم الكتاب and they are the أم الكتاب وأخرى متشابهة and the other verses uh, perhaps are ambiguous meaning that they they are are more open to interpretation they are more general ayats and then Allah subhanahu wa taala says فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ and as for those whose heart is uh, a sickness and 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 a disease فيبتغون ما تشابه من they uh, want and seek to gain and, and get into those doubtful matters they follow the mutashabaha they follow those ayats which are open to interpretation in order to fulfill their desires من وابتغاء الفتنة and seeking fitna وابتغاء تأويل and seeking to uh, interpret وما يعلم تأويله and only Allah knows their their ta'wil illallah wa rasakhun fil ilm and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and the people who are well grounded in knowledge this is ahl ilm again the fadl of the people of knowledge of the ulama wa rasakhun fil ilm yaquluna aminna bi and the people of knowledge those grounded firmly ulama that are grounded in knowledge they say we believe we believe everything that comes from our Lord. Every ayat. And only those people who possess knowledge have this. So again, showing us that Allah distinguishes between the people who have knowledge and those who do not have knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all throughout the Quran, he says about the, the, the importance of the people of, of knowledge and that they are, are the, 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 the people of fadl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem Describing the people of knowledge Allah Subhana and also describing the people of ignorance so showing us that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala uh, distinguishes between those people who know and those people who do not know uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem bal aktharuhum la ya'lamun he says and rather most of them do not know and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
Fiki Tabi and Kareem that he only gives a few, only gives some uh, some knowledge, meaning that we as human beings were ignorant, but who are the best? They are those people who possess knowledge, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and mentioned in the ayat that we already mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And most of them, they don't know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ about those people who uh, possess knowledge, about the ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the ulama. He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, about the, uh, about the ulama, qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al -kareem. Are those who know similar to those who do not know? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He gives darajat, He gives uh, different levels to those people, to the people who know. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so we know that the Quran is filled with the importance of. Of the, of the ulama. And in the hadith of Abi Huraira, on Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha matal insan an kata anhu amalahu illa min talaf, illa min sadaqatin jariya, o ilm yuntufa bi, o waladin salihin yid'u lahu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that when a person dies, he leaves behind three. His deeds uh, cease to exist except three. Again, showing us the importance of knowledge. Except the one who gives the continuous charity. Or the one who leaves behind knowledge that the people benefit from. Or the one who leaves behind a righteous child who supplicates for him. And the Prophet wasallam said, In the fadl al-ilm, خَيْرٌ مِنْ فَضْلِ الْعِبَادَةِ وَخَيْرَ دِينَكُمْ الْوَرَعِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Hudayfa bin Yaman رضي الله تعالى عنه He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the benefit or the, the greatness of knowledge is better than the greatness of ibadah and the best of you is those or the, 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 the best one possessing deen is the one who has wara, who has this humility and humbleness, meaning that operating upon the knowledge. So of course, we should have good uh, outlook on the ulama, that they operate by their knowledge. Otherwise, Islam would have not been preserved. Why? Because Allah preserved it through men. He preserved it through ulama, men and women who sacrificed their lives, the isnad, of the, the, we wouldn't have hadith books if it wasn't for knowledge. So how is it we can say in 2014 that we don't need the ulama or that the ulama are armchair revolutionaries or that the ulama are scholars for dollars that the, or that the ulama are something even worse than that. They only know about uh, issues of, of uh, women's menstruation and all of these evil and wicked that have been unknown in the history of Islam that people would say these things. It is only now that we have people who are arrogant enough, and I, and I hope that the brother will make toba for what he said. You must make toba for what you said. Why? Because you're belittling those who Allah loves. Inna akhsha ibadi al ulama. Verily, those people who fear Allah the most is the ulama. So Allah says this. Allah said it. I didn't say it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made taqid of it in all of his ahadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ سَلَّكَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمِسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمٍ صَحَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا لَلَا جَنَّةً Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, then Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah. What does that require? It requires knowledge. It doesn't mean anyone can interpret Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the fahm of the salaf of this ummah. Never. أَحَبَتِ فِي اللَّهِ Why? 
because you will read the Quran and come up with something different. If you don't even know Arabic, how can you even begin to even enter the conversation? We can't even enter the conversation if we don't have competent Arabic. Competent Arabic. We can't even begin to make, even breathe statements like this. Why? Because you don't even have access to Kitab Allah. Well, well, Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in its original form in Kitab Allah, the speech of Allah. If you can't read the speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and you don't know the speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and you haven't studied Tafsir of speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala, how can you make statements like this? How? And I'm not saying that the brother hasn't. Perhaps he has. But I'm making this point that this shubahat is widespread. That people belittle those people who Allah loves. Innama akhsha ibadi al ulama. Verily, those people who fear Allah the most is the ulama. So Allah does not describe the ulama as armchair revolutionaries. Allah does not describe the ulama as people who who don't uh, help move the ummah forward. Allah describes them as the people who fear Him the most. The Prophet sallallahu said, "They are the inheritance." Warathul Anbiya, that they are the inheritant inheritors of the Prophets. Alayhim Afdal Salatu Wasalam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith Azim, which shows us and illustrates the statement of the Jahil that Yasir Qadi uttered and others who follow his 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 way of belittling and cutting off the people from the scholars. Who are they to cut off people from the scholars? Those scholars taught those people and those people had nothing of knowledge compared to those people who spent 50 years teaching in the Haram, teaching in Medina. What about Sheikh and Abdul Masin al Abad and Alama bin Fozan and many, many ulama and even younger ulama who those people can't even equal the fingernail, the dirt of the fingernail of one of those ulama. So how is it, Ahabatifillah, that we want to bring the people away? In fact, we want to invite the people to come closer and learn from the ulama. Yes, the ulama make mistakes. No, the ulama are not infallible. We don't believe like the Shia, the Rafida, and all these other groups, and these extreme Sufis who worship their ulama. No, we know they're human beings, but they're the best. We know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said they're inheritors of the Prophet. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man yuridullahu bihi khayran yafqahu fi din." Whenever Allah gives knowledge to a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. Who who could that be? Habib Tafillah? Is that describing the jahil? Is that describing the ones who make fatwa on Yahoo and, and YouTube and this? Or is that describing those people who served Islam? Those people who, who their books, we benefit. They wrote, like Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, between Asr and Maghrib, writing Aqidah to Wasatiya, and things that we study. We spend months and years studying books that he wrote between Asr and Maghrib. How is it we can belittle the ulama? How is it that we can say that we're anything like the ulama and that we can interpret and, and, and our interpretation is like the interpretation of the ulama, or better than the ulama, or even comparable to the ulama, or even permissible. It's not a habitifillah. We It is not for us to interpret Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. Otherwise, we would have ended up like the Jews and Christians, who after, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's after knowledge came to them, they went astray. لَمْ يَكُنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَحْلَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين والمشركين ها منفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة. الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب الكريم that the مشركين and the Jews and the Christians أهل الكتاب they didn't go astray until what until after it came to them بينة. And after, when things became clear, that's when they divided. That's when they didn't hold on to the hablillah. They didn't hold on to, uh, uh, to elm and practice the knowledge. Either they didn't practice the knowledge or they denied the knowledge. They, they, didn't, they did that or they were ignorant. But guess what? After clarity came to them. How is it a habitifillah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who know are not like those who do not know. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. Allah distinguishes between them. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, مَا تَزَلْ طَيْفَةٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِي ظَاهِرِينَ لَحَقٍ حَتَّ يَأْتِيهُمْ أَمْرَ اللَّهِ وَهُمْ عَلَى ذَلَكِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, لَا تَزَلْ طَيْفَةٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِي There won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the haq. لَا تَزَلْ طَيْفَةٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِي ظَاهِرِينَ لَحَقٍ لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ No one will harm them. مَنْ خَمْنْ those who differ with them nor those who uh, disagree with them or go against them until the hour is established letting us know that there would be a group from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that will always be on the haq believe that this is from wahi this is from revelation this is from the sunnah the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam la tazal taifatu min ummati zahirin ala haq hatta yatihum amr Allah wa hum ala thalik wa kama qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said there won't cease to be a group from my nation upon the truth so how is it that you can, so is it the ignorant person who doesn't know m much about Islam, who studied at a university, who studied here and studied there, but doesn't really know, doesn't know uh, the, 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 the usul fiddin, doesn't know the, the foundation of the religion, doesn't know tawheed, doesn't know the Arabic language to even go to those texts, doesn't know usul of fiqh, doesn't know kawaii fiqhiyah, doesn't know uh, uh, the the. Uh, the the ahkam of Sharia doesn't know fiqh. How how are those the people who know, or are, is Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about those who know, those who are rasikhun fil ilm as Allah mentioned, and those who know. Ahabti fil Allah that should be no mystery to us. And as the ulama, the, the, from the salaf of this ummah, like Imam Ahmed, wa ghayrihi, kathir, said, I don't know who this hadith describes except Ahla Hadith, what is a rough interpretation, meaning that this hadith describes the people of knowledge of ilm. Inna al-ilma deena, fal yandru amma yakhdu deenakum. Verily, this knowledge, uh, this religion, is based on knowledge. So look to those you take your deen from. This is a statement of Ibn Sarin. Imam Ibn Sarin, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Ahabati Fillah. There is countless ahadith, countless ayat, which show us the importance of knowledge and the ulama. So do never belittle the scholars. And I'll end with this last hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa ala Alihi Wasallam when he said Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi amongst the many ahadith Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Wa an Abdillah ibn Amr ibn As radiyallahu tala anhuma qala qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inna allaha la yaqbadu al-ilma intiza'in يَنْتَزِعُهُ مِنَ الْعِبَادِ وَلَكِنْ يَقْبِدُ الْعِلْمَ بِقَبْدِ الْعُلَمَاء حَتَّى إِذَا لَمْ يُبْقِي عَالَمٍ اتَّخَذَ النَّاسِ رُوَاسًا جُحَّالًا فَسُئِلُوا فَأَفْتَوْا بِغَيْرِ الْعِلْمِ فَضَلُّوا وَأَضَلُّوا أَحَبَّتْ فِي اللَّهِ This hadith right here should be sufficient. And it should have been sufficient for me just to mention this hadith, an authentic hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that was narrated in Bukhari and also in Muslim. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, as was reported uh, on uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Verily Allah does not take away knowledge uh, in its entirety except by uh, uh, taking it from from his slaves however the knowledge is taken away and removed by taking the ulama the Prophet ﷺ said by taking the ulama until there does not remain an alam for the people to take from and they take from the heads of the people of ignorance 
and they ask them and they give fatwa without knowledge and they are misguided and they misguide. Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi said this. I didn't say it. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah didn't say it. My ulama didn't say it. But we all agree to it because it's from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he told us that knowledge is taken away by the ulama. And don't we live in a time when we see many great giants of knowledge have passed on and many will pass on after us. And on top of that, don't we live in a time now when everyone can share their opinion, no matter how ignorant. They could be the person who lives in a dirt cave and has never studied anything, but yet they can have an audience. And it could be the person who sits here or there or anywhere, has never picked up an Islamic book or just entered the fold of Islam and make a fatwa and people will follow. And as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they afto that the Prophet Sallallahu said that these people they make fatwa and they are misguided and they misguide others and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan and may Allah guide us all to the suwab and forgive us of our many many sins and mistakes wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam